first Confederate monuments. They should be gone with the wind, taken down not by protesters, but by local governments wherever they are across the country. The Confederacy was a treasonous insurrection against the United States, perpetrated by the landed oligarchs which dominated the antebellum South. They not only wanted to maintain slavery, they wanted to further expand it across our continent. As conservatives, we don't lionize traitors. Preserving history doesn't require aggrandizing its most abominable actors. As Jeb Bush aptly said years ago, Confederate monuments and flags should be relegated to museums. Defund the police. What you're not hearing is that that would almost certainly lead to a proliferation of private security forces hired by corporations and wealthy individuals. Kind of like the Pinkerton men of the early 20th century. And those private security forces would receive a lot less oversight than today's local police departments. They wouldn't be directly accountable to elected officials. And the defund the police idea also has a profound impact on the gun control debate. Ironically, for decades, it's the anti-gun forces, the left, that has said that the government should have a monopoly on the use of deadly force. Well, if you disarm or even diminish local police departments, that's going to give the pro-Second Amendment, pro-gun movement a lot more momentum. You're going to see a lot more receptivity across the country uh, by lawmakers for concealed carry, open carry of handguns. You reduce the power of the police, you're going to have a lot more armed people, believe me. Despite the terrible name for their movement, Defund the Police, some of the ideas these groups are talking about make perfect sense. And I know some law enforcement experts and police chiefs that actually agree with some of these ideas. I mean, clearly what we're doing now in our most crime-ridden inner cities is not working. When you have a dozen people shot or even killed in one weekend in a city like Chicago, when you have 70% of murders unsolved in a lot of our big cities, that is not effective. That is not acceptable. Every day, we're asking police in those crime-ridden neighborhoods to confront situations that they are ill-equipped to solve drug abuse, mental health issues, the pathologies associated with poverty. What's so crazy about the idea of having an army of social workers, mental health experts to build relationships in these neighborhoods before crimes erupt, to to deal with situations before deadly force is required? Now, I would say back them up with a well-trained police force able to use force when it's required, But that could be a very effective combination. It kind of brings to mind the Andy Griffith show, that show in the 1960s set in the mythical town of Mayberry, where Sheriff Andy Taylor didn't carry a gun, and when problems arose, he usually just talked people through it. He employed what modern police forces call de-escalation, deal with problems before they reach the level of violence. Now, it may be a fantasy to have Andy Taylor's in some of our most crime-ridden areas of our country, but maybe if you had people that are not armed, that are not ready to use force right away, building relationships, we would be having a lot more success in our most crime-ridden inner cities, and we might have a lot more trust in the police departments. And I don't know why we can't have people who believe we should diminish police and seasoned law enforcement experts get together and collaborate and come up with a plan to combine ideas from both sides uh, and then test those ideas, maybe on a precinct by precinct basis in some of our big cities. I don't think you should flip a switch in a big city in Detroit or New York or Chicago and change from the police paradigm we have now to a totally different uh, situation. That's dangerous that puts people's lives at risk but we can find ways to intelligently combine some of these ideas uh, and test them on a limited basis and carefully analyze the data and see if that will work better than what we're doing now the people involved in the tumult over the past few weeks fall into three categories peaceful protesters who are pushing for needed change in the criminal justice system criminals who would be committing crimes anyway and use the protests as cover and nihilistic people who are lashing out people that feel that they have nothing to lose have no hope the real question the question that nobody's asking is 
Why do we have a country teeming with people in categories two and three, concentrated in our inner cities? That's not acceptable in the United States of America. The most important issue we must focus on is how do we prevent today's kids in those distressed communities from growing up to be that way. There are programs that make that possible. It is possible to give these kids an alternative to dangerous neighborhoods and toxic home lives, to give them a nurturing environment when they get out of school every day and during the summer. And nobody's even talking about that. But that's the most important thing that we should be talking about.